Thank you for joining this session in which I'll give a snapshot of how wireless remote condition monitoring can make mines safer and more productive. Sensive monitoring technology has been around and under continuous improvement since 2005. It's used in more than 40 countries. In mines, it's used in applications including open pit mines, in underground mines, and in waste dumps, tailings dams, and mine infrastructure. So in this session, I, I wanna give a taste for that by looking at the need for monitoring. I'd look at some technology options that are available for monitoring, and I will focus on wireless remote condition monitoring, how it works, the platforms, the sensors, and the data. I'll then finish by looking briefly at some examples. So mines are challenging places and slopes in particular are often optimized for their economic productivity. They're kept as steep as possible, but of course they must be safe um, because when things go wrong, they can be expensive, dangerous, uh, environmentally damaging. The collapse at Bingham in Utah 2013 uh, had enormous consequences in terms of the economic impact on this mine. It mercifully uh, resulted in zero loss of, of life, but a, a major failure of a, of a slope, uh, which um, caused great consequences. The collapse of the Fundeo Dam in southeast Brazil in 2015 was the country's worst environmental mining disaster. Uh, it released huge amounts of tailings waste flooding and contaminating the valley below, causing enormous distress, damage, and uh, a loss immediately of, uh, of around about 19 uh, lives, tragically. Enormous environmental impact and enormous financial impact. Why am I showing these? Well, I'm showing them because I think that monitoring uh, can be part of a solution to reduce the risk of these types of events. and a way of mitigating the impact of them um, as and when they do occur. So advantages and reasons to monitor, I think include the health and safety uh, arguments. I think there is a strong environmental argument. And I think that there is a, a justification in terms of uh, contributing positively to the bottom line of the, uh, the mine operation. And there's a range of tools out there to consider. Uh, towards the top of this list, there are a series of uh, relatively hands-on um, methods that typically gather geotechnical data, uh, often from depth, extensometers, inclinometers, piezometers, in boreholes, uh, tilt sensors looking at shallow ground deformation, and remote sensing options ranging from repeated use of laser-based geodetic survey methods slope stability radars or satellite INSAR. Now they all have their strengths and their weaknesses often related to sampling and uh, precision. And I think the tilt sensors um, are an attractive option as part of the wireless family of uh, solutions because they provide this pragmatic and uh, attractive balance between the sampling, the spatial coverage and the precision that they can offer. So tilt sensors, they're part of this wider family of wireless remote condition monitoring. They come along with crack sensors to look at movement across cracks or joints. They come with, with cellular cameras to give you eyes on the site before you can get boots on the ground. They come with laser optical displacement sensors to look at movement of distant objects or, or surfaces. And they come with a package of interface nodes, either the gray unit, which is in, will pick up um, signals from uh, analog sensors, third party sensors, or the, uh, the white unit, which is the uh, digital interface node, uh, able to pick up um, data and automate logging of uh, digital um, sensors and, and, and nodes. And in the middle of this picture, uh, you've got the gateway, this collates, collects and transmits data from all of those sensors onto a web-based data portal. So if we look just as an example of the appliance of the latest of these tools, the digital interface node, um, you can see how it can be used in practice in a mining application. Uh, take a tailings dam, for example, you've got uh, piezometers and you've got uh, inclinometers installed 
and uh, you can see here as you've got groundwater encroaching uh, laterally through this dam uh, the piezometer is picking these up the inclinometer is picking up deeper ground deformation you may have tilt sensors at the near surface and the digital interface node is collating those data and transmitting them to a remote user the remote user will see them um, on a platform which in our case is, is, is typically uh, called web monitor it allows the remote interaction with the system um, it allows you to do things like adjusting the sampling regime or to request a photograph um, and you can export from here to a range of proprietary visualization platforms of your choice and mine owners of course often want data in-house they want it on premise and that is possible using tools like the Sensive IO data management software. So what, they, what you haven't seen so far, you've seen the parts that are visible, the tangible elements of the system. You haven't seen the intangible, the invisible elements, which is really the, uh, the way that the system talks to it, it, itself, the way that data are transmitted through the system on site through a, a, a monitoring platform. FlatMesh is our intelligent monitoring platform. It's built around a mesh-based system in which the nodes talk to each other and transmit data in pockets um, to back to the gateway. Um, FlatMesh is a robust, self-healing, uh, responsive uh, system. It allows a dense network, up to 100 sensors can be included in different types of, including different types of instruments. And they can be, um, all communicating through the same gateway. It operates at a relatively high part of the spectrum, 2.4 gigahertz, which allows us to get high level of reporting, um, sub minute frequency um, sampling if needed. Um, the range limited to about 300 meters um, and we can power this system using solar panels. If you need longer range, then look further down the radio spectrum and use the LoRaWAN system. Um, this um, is Sensive's long range monitoring platform, GeoWAN. Um, and unlike FlatMesh, uh, it's not a, a mesh based system. It's a point to point system in which nodes located over, over large areas will transmit data in an individual paths back to the gateway. So this system um, allows you to install more nodes over a wider area, up to a thousand per gateway, over up to 15, 15 kilometers range in theory. Um, but it's a bit slower, um, it needs fixed power, um, and uh, it doesn't come with uh, a lot of the responsive benefits, the dynamic sampling that uh, the flat mesh platform can provide. So just to look at that difference there, um, and the, the key advantage of the flat mesh system, this is incorporated into InfraGuard, which is our intelligent monitoring solution, uh, which we use to detect long term incremental movement as well as sudden events. It's particularly suited to looking at uh, slope risk mitigation monitoring. So with an InfraGuard system, this harnesses the intelligence of the sensors within uh, uh, the flat mesh um, system. Um, it allows them to sample on a scheduled basis, say every 30 minutes for, for many years, possibly more than 10 years, uh, but also to be able to wake itself up in the event of sudden movement and send alerts, multiple levels of alerts even, um, before um, you can get to site and even trigger photographs so that you can see what's happening there before you can get out there. So this is an example um, of an installation on a site in South America. It shows the layout of flat mesh tilt nodes and a 4G camera um, on the bench of a, of a copper mine. And just for orientation, this, this bench was monitored because of cracking visible um, where the green arrow indicates here on the bench. Um, the graph shows data from just one of the tilt nodes installed on stakes and the X axis is displaying data over a 2.5, two and a half day uh, time scale. The Y axis is showing measurements of, uh, of movement in millimeters uh, with the color bands indicating three millimeter steps. So you can see the blue arrow um, indicates data uh, a reading taken at uh, six o'clock, 1800 hours on the 21st of March, 2023. 
Um, there's a small amount of movement just picked up at that point. But if you project forward 24 hours, that movement has continued very small. It's settlement of 2.5 millimeters in 24 hours, but it is taking the form of creep, continuous deformation, um, which has continued through that period. Um, and larger cracks have become visible in the photographic imagery at the edge of the bench. Now, after 36 hours, there's a series of discrete spikes in the data. There's visible deterioration of the slope, um, as you can see in the photographs. And this, in fact, was the last picture that was taken before this happened. And the slope has failed. It's taken the camera with it. And you can see basically that piece of rock disappearing down into the open pit mine. I think a project like this demonstrates the ability to see early signs, to get early warning, to possibly initiate remedial work, but certainly to get people and kit out of the way. Um, and remember, these systems are easy and quick to install. They're easy to, 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 to move and to expand and reuse elsewhere. So if you see evidence of a problem, you can install this type of system quite quickly in a matter of hours. Really. So just to look at a few examples to wrap up of this sort of system in use in South Africa on the tailings dam. We've got multiple sites being monitored as part of a closure management system. These sort of locations, they're difficult to drill into. Um, it's quite easy to put a tilt node um, on the surface to look at um, long-term trends in terms of deformation. Different sort of application here in Canada, looking at rockfall detection in a slope that's uh, prone to seasonal thawing of winter ice. Chile, an, uh, another open pit mine site, hundreds of kilometers from settlement. Now, often the mines, they're, they're located in places with poor cell coverage and we'll always look for a solution. Um, SATCOMs can be uh, uh, one that was used uh, in, in this case. In Peru, um, again, mines are often located in places that are subject to harsh weather conditions. Uh, the instruments <coughs> are IP67, 68 rated. Um, this site, it's at high altitude up in the Andes, it's subject to low temperatures. That isn't a problem. The tilt sensors will operate in a range from minus 40 to plus 85 degrees centigrade. And we're, we're frequently seeing data coming in at, at, at sub 30 degrees centigrade with no impact on precision or on repeatability. So it's, it's robust kit built for challenging places. So I hope this overview has shown how wireless monitoring can be easy to install, uh, flexible, precise, how it can be used as part of a short term um, or a long term um, application, how it can predict or provide warning of potentially dangerous um, and expensive slope failures, as well as a, a range of other issues that can affect mine productivity. We'd love to hear from you. Um, please get in touch.